Hey guys, and welcome back to yet another episode of It's About Time. Hopefully you guys can see me pretty well. I think you guys can. Anyways, um, I know we actually did not do a video uh, last night giving you an update to the challenge. Uh, I actually just checked um, our YouTube channel to see if Drew uploaded anything or whatever, or if Dave did. Um, I know things have been a little crazy and hectic all the way around and stuff like that for all of us. So I decided why not make the update challenge video. Um, I hope you guys were able to follow through a little bit on the challenge and, you know, join us with it. I do have the results. Drum rolls and stuff like that. Anyways, um, the Oris. Um... So now, guys, just to give you an idea, uh, 24 hours a day times, I'm just doing a little math on my computer right now, times 7 days a week equals, this was after 168 hours, okay? So we're going to give you guys a little bit, uh, I'm going to bring up just a few screens here. Um, uh, the first thing, uh, the Oris, uh, the Oris regulator that Dave has. Um, ended up being 14 seconds fast, I might add fast, over uh, 14 divided by 168, okay, um, 14 seconds fast over the week. By the way, what's on the wrist, it's, it's still the Hamilton, all right, it's still the Hamilton, um, which uh, equated out to be around 0 .083 seconds fast per day, uh, or not per day, but per hour. Multiply that over a 24 hour span, and that gives you about two seconds fast a day, which is very, very, very incredible. Um, the Omega averaged negative minus 3.5 seconds uh, slow per day. So we do 3.5 divided by uh, 168. And that gives you an average of 0.02 seconds slow per, I guess, hour, whatever it is. You multiply that by 24, and that's going to give you a half a second a day uh, slow. Still pretty damn impressive, although it kind of sucks that it would be running slow and not fast. But um, now I thought with the, I'm not sure if that watch is made us certified or not. Because I know the ones that, it probably isn't, because the ones that are made of certified run between zero to plus five per day. Um, anyways, so which brings us to the Hamilton, which um, did plus 25 seconds over the week, which is really not that bad um, at all, again, for, for all these watches. So we do 25 seconds, divide that by 168 hours. And that gives you a uh, running of around 0.1481 give or take per hour multiply that by 24 24 hours in a day and that gives you an average of 3.57 3.57 seconds fast per day all three watches all running damn good um so again that just gives you guys the idea of um you know of course you know the hamilton or i'm sorry the omega came in first of course theoretically in terms of deviation the Oris came in second and the Hamilton came in third um, am I surprised um, no not, not necessarily you know um, all three are very good uh, somewhat beastly watches the Omega just stands out a little bit more um, and you know of course listen at the end of the day in a week's time frame they're all running very impressively you know, again, you guys have to remember that uh, COSC certification is minus four plus six per day average. Made a certification from Omega uh, for their newest movements is zero to plus five per day. Um, so that one is not running within the Meta certification. Um, but you know, again, when you have deviations like that of um, anywhere between even zero to plus five you're doing fantastic or even you know even minus you know a second a day or whatever it is which is really good so though i wanted to bring you guys the updates on on that challenge um we uh, drew and i challenge the drews and eyes challenge of wearing those watches is going to be 
pushed back uh, quite a bit at this point. Uh, I don't think we're going to be doing that necessarily anytime soon. We were discussing it's going to be at a later date, so I don't want you guys to worry. But um, let's see here. Um, other piece of news. So uh, I guess maybe I'll make an admission to something. Um, I, I've been on the hunt uh, for something recently. The past few years has been very, very, very challenging, very difficult to find. Um, the good news is that I finally found it. Um, so I guess part of this episode uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll give you guys like a little bit of a teaser into uh, actually what I'm going to do so I don't give the, uh, give the watch itself away. What I'm going to do is uh, I was planning on copying and uh, pasting the... Oh, I can actually copy and paste it. So I'm going to copy and paste it very quickly while I have you guys on the video into a uh, Microsoft Word document because I'm not giving away the name of this or anything. Um, so... Uh, anyways, on Facebook, very interesting is that um, there's a particular brand. If you guys are on Facebook, you guys would know it. And if not, I'm not going to tell you guys, um, at least just yet. Um, there's a particular brand that does a lot of advertising um, for, uh, for their watches. And this is a brand that does things kind of interesting where they do... Um, pre-order they've been doing this lately pre-orders for their timepieces and then uh you know like what like a lot of the micro brands do where they do crowdfunding on like you know kickstarter or something like that or whatever other you know crowdfunding sites there are and then what they do um is that you know once that like, like little pre-order crowdfunding um time has ended uh they'll release the watches to the uh greater general public at a you know retail price and then you have to be able to um you know go through an authorized dealer or try to find one through you know a gray market seller or on corner 24 joma shop ebay whatever it is sometimes they have them available sometimes they don't it depends you know most of the ones that i'm talking about at least that do the pre-orders they're not readily available because they're not the most popular watches in the world and you know you know there's only a certain amount available and usually people buy them up and then uh, that's kind of it. The only way you can really get them is through the you know the websites themselves. So this particular brand uh, I noticed I noticed this just last night is doing a um, a pre-order on it. Um, I'll give you guys some of the specs on it. Again I'm not gonna you guys may be able to see from the video in a minute. I'm, I'm literally gonna go turn the lights off. I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of a teaser on it. But uh, with this particular watch, it's um, specs on it are this. Uh, let me let me actually go to uh, the watch for a second, because um, I want to get you guys the exact movement and things like that. And like I said, I'm sorry that I'm doing this while uh, you guys are over uh, doing this on the video. Um, so, anyways, this wa this particular watch has the uh, movement of the ETA 2836-2. Um, I believe that my Hamilton has the 2824-2, I believe. Uh, the reason why it has the ETA 2836-2 is because it is a day date model. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, 25 joules. Um, I guess this one, uh, this particular one, it's, uh, it's going to be a chronometer. And for those of you out there who are not sure what a chronometer is, it performs to within minus four plus six seconds per day. Uh, it's a 40 millimeter case, which is a little large, you know, for my liking, but it's it's gonna do for this piece. Uh, it's got uh, 200 meters, 660 feet of water resistance, uh, anti-magnetism to 4,800 um, AM. Um, this may give it away a little bit, but I'm totally okay with, with that. For those of you who will know which watch this is, um, it's got uh, 16 micro gas tubes on the bezel, hour, minute, and seconds hands, and dial for night reading capability. Okay, it's got the hours, minutes, sweep seconds, day and date, with the uh, 5,000 Gs of shock resistance, which is really freaking unbelievable. 
uh, stainless steel case, unidirectional rotating aluminum bezel with gas tube insert. Kind of cool. Again, for those of you who really know watches will know this is really between one of two brands. I'm not going to say the brand though. And it's got the sapphire crystal, uh, sapphire crystal transparent case bag. Uh, it's got a screw and crown, anti-reflective sapphire crystal. The dial color is blue, and the aluminum rotating bezel is blue as well. Uh, it's got a stainless steel bracelet with folding buckle, and the lug width is 20 millimeters on it. And like I said, I'm not going to tell you guys the price. I'm not going to tell you guys anything on it. Uh, if you guys want to try to do your own little research, feel free and do it. Um, but this watch, I, I have to tell you guys this. I've been searching for a watch for many, many years now. Okay. Um, will I sell the Hamilton? It's a possibility. I have to tell you. For, for this watch, it's a possibility. I've been looking for a watch with uh, day date. Uh, for a long time with tritium tubes so they l stay lit you know f uh, continuously for up to 25 years in low light situations but more importantly you know uh, the 40 millimeter obviously you know I wish it was a little smaller but you just can't find watches of this type um, <laughs> really anywhere for for under 40 millimeters nowadays um, and but I've been looking for a watch with a blue uh, dial, blue bezel, like just blue everything. Um, it's blue is one of really the hardest watches out there to find. They're really some of the most expensive. Sorry, I'm just checking the time because I know I'm blabbing on right now. Can't help it as always. Um, so you know, to finish out the episode, I'm going to show you guys. You know, uh, this watch uh, lit up. Yeah. For those of like I said, for those of you who know the watch, we'll narrow it down to one or two brands. Um, and yes, it is an automatic. The other cool thing about this watch, besides it being a chronometer, is it has 80 hours of power reserve, meaning you could put it down on a Friday, pick it up on a Monday, it's still running. Um, you know, as much as I like this Hamilton, I saw this watch and I was like, wow, this is, this is freaking cool. I'm just waiting for, uh, one kind of piece of, um, information from the company, it's not going to help sway my decision because I'm still going to you know, end up getting it uh, probably. But um, I at least wanted to just make a little inquiry into the company. You know, it's so important to do your due diligence as a, um, as a consumer. Um, but anyways, I've been going on quite enough. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to... Uh, so I'm going to turn off the lights here. You guys aren't going to see me. You guys are going to hear me. And... Uh, Oh, okay. What I have to do now, actually, is I have to go up to uh, the light switch up here. I not really do this, so I'm going to do that now. Like I said, you guys are not going to see me, but that's kind of the whole point of this whole thing. Because I don't want you guys to see me. I want you guys to be able to see the watch. So we're going to bring it on over here. <laughs> you guys may be able to see an outline of me. Oh, you guys can. All right. Well, here we go. That is going to be the new incoming watch. You guys may be able to see the brand. You may not be able to see the brand, but that's just sick and ridiculous. And uh, the particular watch, I'm going to bring it back to me now. The particular watch will, uh, I'm going to go turn the light back on, will be limited to a thousand pieces. It's not, to me, it's not exactly a limited edition. Um, but that's just from, from the brand. Of course, you know, I'm giving away so much information from you guys. All you guys have to go and do, literally, is to go and, uh, do your research and then you'll be able to find it. Um, so anyway, so that's the watch. I wanted to just show it to you guys. I'm not revealing the brand. I'm not revealing the model. I'm not revealing anything to you. You guys want to know what it is? And I'm not going to answer any questions about it either. So if you guys want to check it out, you're going to go find it. For yourselves, yeah, I'm being a little mean, but whatever. I don't, I don't really care in this case. So anyway, so that's the watch. Uh, very, very excited about it. Uh, it also comes with uh, yeah, a selection of NATO straps. Although the the NATO strap is like eighty five dollars, and I'm like, hell no, eighty five dollars. Like, no offense, suck me off. It's not happening. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm just like, you know, like whatever. But. Uh, uh, the other thing that I, I found out about this watch is, you know, may sway people, doesn't sway me whatsoever because I have time. 
um, this particular watch um, I think won't be shipping or available until uh, like almost mid next year I'm willing to wait for it it's not I've already waited years for something like this um, and I'm willing to wait a little bit more again for, for the blue for everything um, it, it really is very worth it you know, and the price is really not bad at all. I'm not going to tell you guys the price, like I guess. I'm not telling you guys anything. Uh, except for the details, which I already told you about with the watch. But I'm not telling you the brand or the price. Um, anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of It's About Time. Uh, the other thing maybe I'll do an episode on, maybe coming sooner going forward, whatever it is, is... Um, micro brands or like do an episode on micro brands. I think that that would be kind of cool. Um, but I think maybe for the next few episodes, unless I have something kind of like interesting, kind of cool to say like this and the update on the challenge, uh, maybe I'll let Dave and Drew take the, uh, baton a little bit. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the results of the challenge. You guys enjoyed hearing about, uh, my next piece, which, um, I'm very much looking forward to. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be extremely, extremely cool. Three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, anyways, uh, I hope you guys don't forget to like and subscribe and be the first to get all of our new content sent directly to you, including this video right here. Um, let's see what else. I think that that's about it. Anyways, guys. Uh, oh, and part of the other reason why, um, if you guys see that logo in the background, you guys probably know me. I'm a huge New Jersey Devils fan. If you guys haven't been able to guess by now, I'm a big New Jersey Devils fan. I just want to show you guys something kind of quickly. Hopefully you guys can see. But, uh, yeah, big New Jersey Devils fan. Sorry to you Rangers fans out there. You guys suck. I'm just being honest. I, I'm not a Rangers fan at all. I hate the Rangers with a passion. And Rangers fans hate, hate Devils fans with a passion. But, anyways, I was watching the game last night. It's part of, partially the reason why I didn't do a, do a video. My team starting off the season four and oh, perfect so far with eight points, uh, defeating Dallas in a shutout, uh, three nothing. Second shutout of the season, four games in. It's pretty damn good, although it's very early in the season, so I'm not you know counting anything yet. Um, but a very good start to the season. So shout out to my uh, right over there, New Jersey Devils. F yeah, baby. Let's keep it going. We got uh, Colorado coming up uh, tomorrow night. Should be a great game. Hopefully, they'll continue the streak and win. Anyways, guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And we're going to catch you guys in the next episode of It's About Time.